Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on a Thursday here in Melbourne. Of course, let's go up to, uh, of course, the North East in particular and of course, uh, and speak to a uh, music artist that, uh, well, early three years ago, we actually interviewed her at Craigie Burn for a completely different thing, uh, of course, uh, in a sporting field side of things. And now, I'll see you uh, She's now got EP as well. She just did a, um, of course, a live stream performance just um, last weekend, just gone. Of course, her name's Chelsea Knight. She joins us right now. Thanks, Chelsea, for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, it's been three years since we last had you on the show, uh, which was on a sporting side of thing. But tell us um, a bit about um, your music side of thing. Well, I've been singing and playing guitar for as long as I remember. I learned the guitar when I was around eight or something, but I've just always been writing my own um, songs and everything. And then finally put out some music in last year. So I've been focusing on music a lot more now that foot is not currently happening right now in my life, but yeah. You just did a live stream just recently, uh, which is called Stream Jam, uh, up there in the Northeast with a couple of other artists involved in that. Um, tell us a bit about how that all went for you last week. It was good. I've done a few live streams during this um, kind of isolation, quarantine type weird, crazy time right now, but I've done a few and I got couple more coming up but it's just a great way because obviously live music isn't happening right now so um to still just people to be able to watch some sort of live music and be able to connect with everybody still so it's still been pretty good the live streams um how good is it to play with um obviously be part of it and especially with so many amazing artists from up in the northeast by looking at the list of names that was on it yeah, uh, the live streams have been great. Most of the live streams that I've done have been like through like festivals or stuff where there's been a lot of different acts on the lineup. I think it's great to um, for people to be able to see a lot of different variety of acts in the local area, which is good. Um, you mentioned about the EP, which we'll talk a bit about that in just a moment. Um, yeah. I guess for you, with no um, like actual face-to-face -face, uh, performances at the moment. Um, how frustrating is that for you, knowing that, you know, you just don't have the restrictions problem that we have down here in Melbourne, uh, but even though, like, you have no, your area has no cases at the moment, but unfortunately you're copying everything that's happening down here in Melbourne. Yeah, well, it has been, I was actually in Melbourne when this all started for uni, um, I just moved back home to the Northeast before it kind of got crazy, but, um, I definitely have, feel like I have a lot more freedom down here. I, ha I live on a bit of land, so I don't really feel I have it as bad as some people in the city. And how frustrating is it to not do any live performances? Um, uh, I, it was annoying cause I was just wanting to get, there was a couple gigs lined up and, um, I was starting to get into getting a band together down there. I went to do more shows up there, but um, obviously that will take a while before that gets back into it again. But yeah. Let's talk a bit about your EP um, and tell us um, a bit about it and I guess how people can listen to it. Yeah, my EP is self titled EP, the so Chelsea Nights, a collection of songs kind of very old and new, but um, I recorded it down in Wagga and I played all the instruments and stuff on it. And it's pretty much just a pop rock EP. It's very energetic and very bright, I would say. But um, some of the songs I wrote when I was, I think 15 or 16 was the youngest. And then some of the songs like Talk was like the latest song that I wrote on there before I recorded it. So yeah. It's out everywhere too, on all platforms. Um, how's the feedback been like since you released it? It was good it was a while ago now, but it was good because I got to do like an EP launch at the SSNA Club, which is an awesome venue in Albury. And I had a band together for that. 
And um, that was so much fun. That's kind of one of the main things that I wanted to come out of it was to finally play with a band to my music, which I hadn't been able to do that much before. So it was really good to be able to do that and to finally kind of put um, some songs to the name instead of nobody really knowing what my actual original music was like. So, Uh, Have you had a chance to sort of sit down and sort of reassess what you want to do now, like long and short term now at the moment with what's been happening um, with the pandemic and everything else? Short term, I have a few more covers planned up because um, on my Instagram, I posted like uh, covers of songs, like fully filmed and um, produced and stuff. And I definitely have some more of that with featuring other local artists and that because I want to put more of that out while we can't do anything live right now. But long term, I just want to keep doing it. I definitely want to, um, I feel like since my past EP, I've listened to a lot more music and gotten into a lot more different music. And I feel like the next lot of released music will be a lot more mature, but I think just well-polished songs. So I'm keen to um, get into the next phase of writing music. What would be some highlights throughout your music journey so far? Um, obviously the EP putting something out was great. Um, the EP launch too was really something because it was like a first and first kind of, um, show of mine that I really liked, like with the full band and audience and everything. And even just from being, um, in high school still, we, some of my songs with my band in high school won a few awards at cool schools for like best pop rock song and stuff. So there's been a few things, but I just want to keep focusing on how to improve and keep growing, I think, for the future. What does the music scene mean to you now? I think it's, well, locally, it's, that's really most of what I've been exposed to. Um, but it's great. It's, there's, I think there's a lot of support in Aubrey Wodonga. Um, but also in the music scene in general, like mainstream, I think it's really opening up because even like with Billie Eilish, she's such a diverse artist and I think it's opening a lot um, more room for anybody to be in the mainstream, but have such different and unique sounds and kind of not really having a genre to it, which I think is really cool and exciting to see what will the future will hold for upcoming artists. Now, I know that obviously the North East have been hit hard this year uh, in the country. Uh, obviously, bushfires at the start of the year. Um, yeah. And then now the coronavirus. Um, I guess, has music really brought people together? I know that I know that I think it would have been February um, that obviously one of the world's um, music artists came to the North East and did a performance. Since then, how much importance has music been to the community uh, out there in, on the border? I think music in general is something very powerful and can be something that can help everybody come together. Um, in Aubrey Odonga, there's a Aubrey Odonga uh, Facebook page which exp- um, like promotes all local music and stuff. And I think that's been good the live streams especially because everyone is kind of coming together to watch or coming together to play. And I think, yeah, music just has the ability to kind of bond people together, which is awesome. Um, Is your plan at all to hopefully perform in like big stages like down here in Melbourne or uh, around the world? Is that something you want to do? Uh, Definitely. I think anyone in the, um, this game would hope to have the opportunity to do that one day. Um, I still remember one of my first concerts was Miley Cyrus at Rod Laver Arena and Katy Perry and Pink at Rod Laver Laver Arena. And um, every time you go there, it's kind of like mind blowing, just walking through the stadiums and everything. And even, I don't know, it's just crazy, um, which one day the opportunity hopefully would come. 
Uh, is there a particular music artist that you look up to? There's a lot. Uh, <laughs> I mainly have, there's like a few um, that I've always loved and have never really stopped loving, like from when I was really young. Um, I feel like the first two main ones was Avril Lavigne and Pink that really have still stuck with me. And I love Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Halsey. Um, there's a band called The Aces. Mainly, I think I find that m the main people that I really look up to is like strong female women um, who just do really cool stuff and are really strong and yeah but they're the main ones that have inspired me musically and um yeah now i know this is going to sound a really silly question to ask now obviously at the moment um we've got the voice on tv at the moment is that yeah. something you wanted to as well <laughs> i don't i never know what the future will hold so who knows maybe one day I don't, not anytime soon, I don't think, but we'll see. You never know. <laughs> well, uh, what would be your advice to our listeners or viewers out there that should get involved in music, especially in the country areas? You just do it. There's a lot of things. You don't have to play or sing to be a part of the music industry. There's a lot of different people behind the scenes um, involved with live music or just involved in the recording there's so much stuff it would um it'd be really cool to see more girls into it too i know i'm noticing there's a lot more like um girls becoming up in the music industry and pl even playing more instruments and stuff um but yeah for anyone there's just so much that you could do that like in so many different roles that you don't have to kind of sing or anything to do it and if you want to sing then just do it i say now let's finish off with a couple of lighthearted questions. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, last time I had you on the show was three years ago, uh, up in Craigie Burn. Obviously, uh, interviewing you for, uh, of course, uh, as part of the Northeast Bush Rangers um, yeah. uh, in the NAB League. Now it's called. Um, I guess have you convinced any of your your former teammates on that team to uh, come and? Um, see you for some music uh, performances uh <laughs> actually on the uh last season that was with 2018 i think at our like best and fairest night they all heard me sing because our team manager <laughs> got me up there to sing a few songs for them all so they've all heard me <laughs> before and what feedback did you get from them they, I love the girls. They were just, yeah, they loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Did, have you convinced any of them to join you? Oh, gee, no. <laughs> Not sure about that. They can, can if they want. I love them. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, now, any embarrassing moments on the on the stage? Oh, on the stage. Yeah, I mean. I really find on stage you kind of just in another world and you don't really care. Honestly, for me anyway, I don't really care what happens because I'd kind of just laugh off any mistakes or anything that um, really like, I don't know. I don't think there's been one really big one. There's definitely been a few little ones like microphones not working or stuff like that. But to me, I just brush it off anyway because I find that kind of, amusing but yeah is there any point that you forgot a lyrics to a song yes uh i wouldn't say it happens all the time but every now and then you might slip and find a way to cover it up or just keep going but <laughs> yeah <laughs> it happens now i i always ask this question ever since i've started doing interviews with the music um, artists. Um, when you do live performances and introduce yourself to the fans who are there to watch you perform, is there any point you actually forgot where you're playing? Luckily, I haven't been... Most of the places that I've played have been in my local area, so no. But I don't usually... 
I think I'll wait till I'm on a tour or something till I start going, hey, blah, 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 hey, blah, 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 announcing my city. But I don't normally, like, um, introduce the place I'm going, but one day maybe that will happen. <laughs> now, I have to ask, um, is there one special performance that you've been involved in? And secondly, is there, yeah. a, and on the opposite end, was there a, a really funny moment in any of those performances that you've uh, that you've done? I'll just, I'm sure I'll be forgetting um, some eventually, but maybe one of my, a few of my first performances, which is all like in primary school. Um, it was, like, I think, my first time playing. It was kind of big crowd a little bit and first time singing and playing guitar um at the same time I think to an audience that was probably that's obviously a special one because singing and playing guitar was like a big part of my life but um I do remember having something wrong with my voice or something like I like golloped or something a few times in the song so it was like <laughs> the first time doing of a lot of things so that will probably be always I'll still like vividly remember that um so yeah that will probably be one of them but oh that's so hard because I know there's definitely heaps in my mind that I can't think of of special performances but hopefully more special ones to come as well uh any silly moments that's ever happened in any of your performances silly I love when like random things out I think with this fun thing is when you're playing with a band when you are up on stage together and whether something silly happens or not but when you're playing together and you know the songs and you're just having a good time and you know something might go wrong but you just laugh it off I think they're the fun and silly moments when you're playing with a band on stage I think when you're like in it together and just having a ball so now um, do you have a pre-performance superstition or ritual? Mm, I remember in high school, me and my friend, uh, if anyone's seen the movie School of Rock, they do like a little handshake thing. Me and my friend used to do that almost every time, I think. But for me personally, um, if I'm with a band, we'll, uh, my high school band, maybe just fist bump it or something before we go on but for me personally I just kind of don't really have anything I just go on I definitely get really tense before or straight after stage but besides that I just yeah go on don't really have any rituals or anything now we'll finish off with two final ones uh which is I guess for everyone that's um, should follow you on social media and obviously in the music channels. How can I go about it, Chels? So on Facebook, it's Chelsea Night Music. Um, and on Instagram, it's Chels Night underscore. Um, but my music's everywhere. I have music videos on my YouTube channel. You can just search up Chelsea Night. And um, yeah, come join the ride. My musical journey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of course, I'll finish off with this one last one. Now, obviously, we mentioned about um, you mentioned about before about performing in front of your your teammates there at the Bushies um, uh, and all that. Have you done any performances at footy clubs? And um, and I guess what's you know, do you get like any weird requests or songs? Uh. Not so much footy. I remember um, actually another, my local team, Wodonga Raiders, I remember for our presentation night, it was a dress up. So we all dressed up really weird. And me and my cousin actually like made up a rap <laughs> to one of the songs. And we literally like changed the lyrics to um, words that suited every player's strengths and everything. So that was pro that's actually really special when I think about it because that was a lot of fun um, to kind of send off the team too. So that was good. <laughs> well, Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, awesome catching up with you. It's been quite a long time since we last had you on the show and uh, 
and not let's hope everything goes well for you. Hopefully, once this whole COVID situation disappears, um, we get to see you back uh, on stage again, performing in front of uh, your amazing fans. And uh, hopefully, we get to see you on stage uh, instead of seeing you. I know we love to see you on the footy field, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, we get to see you uh, in live performances uh, as well. No worries. No Thanks problem. for having me. No worries. And that's uh, Chelsea Knight there, of course. You can uh, check out her music, uh, as she mentioned, on the music channel, as well as you can follow her progress uh, in her, on her music journey on social media, which uh, we'll be sharing all those uh, links uh, throughout um, the day. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this here on the Thursday edition.